let's actually talk about Xbox now. Yes. Jesus so this is actually something that was reported on last week on Tuesday that we missed. Oh. Um, okay. But I feel like it is still important enough to talk about this week. Okay. Uh, because some publishers reportedly are not sure why they keep supporting Microsoft. I. That's a pretty big thing to talk about. I understand. I I, I see why they would say that. Reportedly, some third-party video game publishers aren't sure why they keep making and supporting games for Xbox consoles due to poor sales in Europe. Uh, in a new podcast from GameIndustry.biz, the head of the outlet, Chris String, explained that while at the 2024 Game Developers Conference, he heard that flatlining Xbox hardware sales in Europe have made some companies question what the point is of continuing to support Microsoft's brand and its various consoles due to a declining audience and lack of growth. The other thing I heard, I heard it from a very prominent company and one not so prominent was Xbox performance in Europe is just flatlining, said Dring on the podcast. I can follow, you can follow our monthly coverage in the games market uh, and you can see that Xbox sales are are falling and it's been falling throughout the last year and it's falling even harder this year. Uh, Dring further said that one major company who reportedly released a big game last year said, I don't know why we bothered supporting it. Oh. We, yeah. Uh, we mentioned on previous podcasts that we'd heard retailers in Europe are considering or had already been cutting back their Xbox stock on the shelves, hardware games, and that kind of thing. And now, uh, now you've got publishers, third-party publishers going, we're putting in a lot of effort trying to create a Series S version and an X version of the game when, to be honest with you, for us, the, PC, the market is PC and PS5. So, something, it's, I think, very soon. Xbox is dropping the Series S. See, I don't know because, like, I recently watched in Austin Evans' uh, short, and he made, brought up a good point. The Steam Deck isn't that much different from a Series S in terms of power. Then why are they and, all bitching? Yeah, and like, <laughs> people are now like optimizing games for Steam Deck, and that yeah. can easily make games optimized for the Series S. So yeah, like, and that's a very good point. Steam but... inadvertently like saved the Series S. Yeah, but they're not bitching about optimizing games for Steam Deck, right? For some reason. Well, because Steam Deck is an accessory to Steam. Like yeah. the main focus is still getting it on Steam. Also, I there's less pressure for to there's less pressure to optimize it for Steam Deck because yeah. Steam Deck users are okay with much less uh, performance right. yeah and i think the fact that microsoft explicitly wants uh yeah performance and fe feature parity between the two versions i mean developers do want that great on deck little checkbox yeah but they don't steam deck users do not care if it's 720p 30 frames yeah you know, it's not a big deal yeah um so yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'd imagine that it is harder probably to optimize for the Series S than it is to optimize for the Steam Deck. Yeah. I think Valve gives really good tools to uh, get things to just work. Everybody that I talk to at like PAX and stuff, all these developers that do like these indie games, there's not, it's never anything graphically intensive. Right. But they all say they did nothing to optimize it for Steam Deck. It just happened to work on Steam Deck. Okay. The only thing that they might do is change the font size. Right. That's the most yeah. that, that I've heard anybody do for Steam Deck. Um, but yeah, the, the actual like news here is that like uh, publishers don't know why they don't know why they're even doing this anymore. Yeah, I mean, so that, that's what I say when I wake up in the morning. It's <laughs> it's it's because of the Series S and that makes perfect sense. Well, it's the Series S and just like the sales aren't there. So this is the sales aren't there in Europe. Right. Are they there in America? I mean, look, we, historically, they've never been there in Japan. Yeah. Uh, they're, uh, currently, they're not there in Europe. Mm -hmm. That's like the two biggest markets, two of the biggest markets right there. America is probably the, uh, Microsoft's biggest market. Yeah. But they're losing that to Sony. <laughs> yeah, that's so, where I'm confused. Yeah. Because it doesn't like the market, the market is anywhere for them right now yeah and that's why they're focusing so heavily yeah. on not being a console manufacturer uh according to i'll continue according to Drang, from what he heard at gdc 2024 xbox is in real trouble as a hardware manufacturer i don't i didn't really oh. factor in that some developers and publishers might just go yeah is there any any point and that is when you can lose it 
Uh, they need to make sure it makes sense to continue to make versions of their games for Xbox, explained Dring. For years now, we've heard Microsoft downplay the importance of selling Xbox consoles as the company has struggled to keep up with Nintendo and Sony's sales of their respective devices. In 2023, Microsoft admitted in court documents oh. that it lost the console war in 2001 and is still losing to this day. We've even seen data suggesting that the PS5 is outselling the Xbox Two to one. We've heard that before. Yes, yeah, for sure. We've been hearing that for years now. Uh, but like Dring, uh, it's always assumed that as long as Microsoft was willing to keep making boxes and selling them, publishers would keep making games for Xbox. However, it seems flatlining sales in Europe and a sense that Microsoft is no longer as committed to Xbox hardware as before, publishing previously exclusive games on PS5, for example, has led to, as Dring explained in the podcast, a sense of confusion over what's going on at Microsoft. And sure, some people are still buying Xbox consoles, uh, but if but if that number keeps dipping and the audience is not growing or shrinking, uh, it makes it makes sense that publishers looking to cut costs might decide an Xbox port isn't worth it anymore in 2024 and beyond. Uh, it's interesting because they said that like when the xbox series s and x were released everyone was like that's gonna be hard for development and yeah. they assured everybody that it wouldn't be uh and i kind of bought into that um and they also said that they would uh that every game that works for the series x will work for the series s yes and they'd be going against that if they axed the series s pretty much well, again, I don't think axing a console is the problem here. I think the problem here is that, you know, regardless of what system is being sold, the games are not being sold. You know, I was in Target the other yeah. day, and the the physical console space for Sony and Microsoft is getting pretty abysmal because, like, it's just one aisle. On one side is Xbox stuff. The other side is PlayStation stuff. And... Like the the Xbox side is significantly more barren than the Sony side, mm -hmm. and on the one end cap where they have the new games, I think I saw one Xbox version of the game. The rest is the P the PlayStation version of the game. Interesting. So is this Target? This is Target. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was the PS5 version of Skull and Bones, the Xbox version of Skull and Bones, the PlayStation version of WWE 2K. Not the Xbox version, the PlayStation version of MLB The Show, not the Xbox version. Yeah. It was just all the PlayStation version of every game, but let's call them bones. So it does look like there's less and less of an incentive on the retail side, even to stock Xbox games. We even there was even that story a while back that uh, Walmart was dis, um, discontinuing selling uh, Starfield, yeah, or they were clearancing on Starfield, and they were scaling back on how many Xbox games they're going to have in stock. Yeah, but if they could just, it it there, there there seems to be a concern that they're they have to make the game for this dying console or the console that nobody's buying games for, right? Right. They have to make the game for that console, and then also they have to optimize it for a much weaker version of that same console. Right. So that's. That that's where where these developers are saying this isn't worth it. It's already not worth it to put it on Xbox because nobody's buying the game on Xbox. Right. And now we also have to optimize it for we have to do more work. Right. That shouldn't have to be the case. So if I were Microsoft, I would be like, okay, you don't have to do it on the Series S. But I think the problem is the Series S is still the Series S is selling better than the Series X because of its low price point. And you know, it's their entry point. It's the Game yeah. Pass entry point. You know, they weren't able to get that $100 streaming box out. So the Series yeah. S is their gateway into the living room. That's the Game Pass so machine. So I still think that a majority of these developers who are saying that their game cannot run on the Series S, is j they're just not trying. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree with you there. As someone who's not a game developer at all, I, yeah. think, mo I think that they're just making excuses. Mm -hmm. And I think that's evident with like Gotham Knights. Yes. Where that game runs dirty across everything. And yeah. they're like, and that guy was, 
that was one of the guys who was who bitching explicitly the most. blame the series s yeah, yeah they blame the series s the yeah. game isn't optimized for fucking anything and yeah. that's why it doesn't run good on the series s yeah it, it's showing the most flaws mm -hmm. um so i think it's easy to blame the series s yeah. but I could see where you w wouldn't want to put the work into it because because yeah. why put all that like like Larian sold so many uh, Baldur's Gate three yeah uh, and they're like why would we why would we change the game just for this one little console right. nobody's gonna buy anything for and then Microsoft's like we'll help you do it yeah and I think Microsoft was like okay you don't have to have split screen on it or yeah. something they, yeah they, like, they were they able to compromise. make concessions for Baldur's Gate but at the same time you know if I was making a game. And I had trouble putting it on Series S. I would say to myself, "Why is Larry and get special treatment yeah. over everybody else?" Yeah, I'd be pissed. Yeah, okay, it's Baldur's Gate three is the big, biggest selling game of the year or whatnot. You want it on your system, but at a certain point, like other people are going to start asking, "Why are we not getting the same treatment as well, Larry?" There's going to be more and more concessions. There's yeah. going to be more. Microsoft's right. going to pull back a little bit and let give people more leeway, or they're just going to have to straight up say, "Hey." This is only going to work on the Xbox Series right. X. This is not going to work on the Series S. And that's why I think they're making a discless white Series X. 